name is Zi Ting Lee. I'm a nuclear medicine physician at Austin Health in Melbourne and the current president of the Australasian Association of Nuclear Medicine Specialists or AANMS. We are the peak body representing medical practitioners in the field of nuclear medicine imaging and therapy, um, ensuring that the highest standard of uh, nuclear medicine is practiced in Australia. For those who don't know, nuclear medicine is using radioactivity um, to treat and diagnose diseases such as heart and lung diseases and various oncological malignancies such as prostate cancer as we'll be discussing today. With, together with stakeholders including the government, we ensure that the um, higher standards of um, nuclear medicine is practiced to the benefit of Australian pe uh, people. Hi, I'm Jeff Shembury. I'm a nuclear medicine specialist as well. I work at Royal North Shore Hospital in Sydney. I've also been the uh, president of the WMS and was able to hand over the reins to ZT. As of July 2022, the new figures released by the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare estimated that over 24,000 Australian men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer this year alone, which makes it the most common cancer diagnosed in Australia. This is even more than breast cancer, which was diagnosed in over 20,000 women this year. The Prostate Cancer Foundation Australia indicated that the number of men being diagnosed is expected to increase by over 40% between now and 2040. It also remains the second most common cause of cancer death in Australian men after lung cancer with over 3,500 deaths per year. Prostate cancer is clearly a major issue for Australian men. When I began the presidency of the WNMS, it was important that we identified a key target to aim for during my presidency as an achievable goal that would bring benefits to as many people as possible. That would benefit not only the members of my association, but the patients that we see day by day coming through our various institutions. Prostate cancer being such a large issue was clearly a target and we had the benefit of having a brand new technique PET stands for positron emission tomography, which is a type of nuclear medicine technology where we inject radioactivity into a patient and the radioactivity emits positrons which are detected with a PET scanner such as the one behind me. Depending on the radioactivity injected, a PET scan can look at different functions in the body. All PET scanners these days are hybrid scanners which are attached to a CT um, scanner um, like this one and that provides the anatomical information to go with the functional information that is provided by the PET scan and there are all now almost a hundred PET CT scanners here in Australia. A PSMA PET scan is where PSMA is injected into the patient. PSMA stands for prostate specific membrane antigen. The important thing with cancer is to look at how accurately you can do initial staging of the patient and then how you can accurately follow them up after you've had the initial treatment provided and what that will mean for the patient in terms of having better outcomes with less side effects. The PSMA PET scan allows us to identify nodal involvement, so this is the involvement of lymph nodes in the pelvis in particular, well in advance of other procedures. CT scan relies on an anatomic change before you can identify that there's an abnormality there. That basically means that they look for nodes that have got big. PET scan has an intrinsic resolution of about four millimeters. We can pick lymph nodes that are normal in size, but they will light up on our scan because they have cancer cells in them. So we have an intrinsic advantage over traditional imaging. And in fact, when they looked at patients who had had traditional imaging and found nothing, the PET scan uh, changed those results in nearly half. So I think it's a really important step forward that we can now look at patients in their initial stage and we can save a lot of patients from having surgery when it's already too late because the cancer has spread and they need to have systemic therapy. Or we can modify their treatment to make sure we encompass all the sites of disease up front. We hope this means that they will end up with better long-term outcomes because we will have caught that cancer earlier in, in the uh, process of the disease. Once you've had your treatment for cancer, 
we're able to monitor how you're going using a blood test called PSA. So PSA is a protein release from prostate cancer cells. And if it's in your blood, we can see the level. Once you've had your prostate removed, obviously that level should drop to zero. If it doesn't drop to zero or if it starts to rise, then we're obviously concerned that we've missed some cancer cells. And this is again where PSMA PET is a game changer. In the past, you've relied on CT, which has been fairly um, uh, gross in its ability to identify sites of disease. And this has often led to patients needing to have just blind radiotherapy to their pelvis and prostate bed in the hope will just happen to catch where the cancer is. With PSMA PET now, we're looking and finding that while, yes, some of that recurrence is in the prostate bed, a lot of it's in lymph nodes that were missed, some of it is in bones, and sometimes it's in far distant places that we would never have suspected, like liver or lung. Australia has been at the forefront of PSMA research for the last um, 10 years, which has been growing in leaps and bounds throughout the world. Through the Australasian Radiopharmaceutical Trials Network, or ARTNET, which is a joint venture of ANMS, one of the first papers which looked at the management impact of PSMA PET was done right here in Australia in 2018. This not only showed a 30% increase, uh, sorry, that 30% of men had disease outside the prostate on the initial staging scan, but also an overall 52% change in management in both staging and restaging patients. Since then, Australia has also produced one of the first papers comparing the role of PSMA PET-CT with conventional staging CT and bone scans, the pro-PSMA study, which not only showed a supreme accuracy of over 90% compared to 60% uh, and greater treatment impact with less radiation involved as well. This was a high impact study that was published in The Lancet in 2020, which was the cornerstone of this MBS application. As Li Ting alluded to, PSMA allows us to target proteins that are on the very surface of prostate cancer cells. This gives us an exquisite ability to identify these cells and their location, and it's a real game changer for the way we're going to be able to manage our patients. The process that was involved in getting this listed on the MBS is a surprisingly complex and convoluted process that requires a lot of effort from a lot of people. I don't want to sound like this was simply my work. There was an entire uh, board of the members who supported me. There have been so many researchers out there who've contributed towards this, and there have been corporate sponsors who have helped us. In particular, I think we need to recognise the work of Cyclotech Australia and Rob Ware, who helped draft the initial submission that we need to make to get anything listed in Australia on the MBS. That submission is reviewed through multiple subcommittees with a lot of to and fro between them and us as we refine the submission. And ultimately, it goes to the Medical Services Advisory Council, who uh, review the application and then make a final decision. It's taken us nearly two years to get it from um, start to finish. And I have to say, that's actually a very rapid result. In the past, we have had applications in for breast cancer, which is another very important uh, disease in Australia. That particular application took seven years to get through. So I have to say that I'm really excited that we managed to get this.